Currently, I am just rebagging all of these Irina minifigures that I got in the mail today. Uh, I, I just personally don't like these bags, and I just have a more uniform bag look for all of my minifigures in general. So I just like to have the same bag for all of them. And then it's just much, these ones feel a lot nicer, and when you're sifting through uh, minifigures, it's a lot nicer than these older ones. And it, they're like pretty cheap, so I'm just gonna rebag them and then double count them and then get them listed and then i'm going to try and tackle some of the galador stuff the figures have been rebagged and counted and are now getting added to the inventory into box 40 and they are about to be listed now ended up with 47 of them so yeah they're gonna much nicer bags now and uh They'll be put in this box, and I'll probably have them for many, many years uh, in the future to sell. But it's nice to have them for sale, at least. Some of the Galador heads had, uh, with the rubber hair, had some dust. It's not really visible in the video much, but there's just some dust on the hair, which you can't really wipe off with a brush or anything like that. So I'm just going to be putting this stuff in a little bit of water and letting it soak overnight and then in the morning i'll just try and brush it off a little bit with a cloth and see if it gets much better then since uh, it's just you can't really get rid of it any other way it's just that weird type of rubbery material where it just doesn't want to leave rice and yogurt rice and yogurt Currently just downloading stuff for the vlog. It is extremely complicated with the entire way that I do it right now. Hopefully I'll be able to simplify it in the future, but then I am just working on some Galador parts. One thing I like to do for the fun of it is whenever I list a part that doesn't have its dimensions, I get my, uh, I honestly can't even remember what that thing's called. Um, and then use it and then I measure the parts. It, it's not that easy. It's uh, quite difficult for some of these parts because you have to get like the exact angles from like here to the top of here without it bending and stuff like that. But then I just get all those angles and measurements and then I enter them into the packing dimensions on BrickLink and add them to the catalog. That way that if I sell one of these and uh, then once they eventually legalize BrickLink by making, by collecting tax in Canada, which they should have been doing uh, since the beginning of July, I can reactivate instant checkout again for Canada and then everything that has dimensions that fits the size of um uh what letter mail can be then it'll have instant checkout so these items if someone were to order them it would be able to go instant checkout because i've now submitted dimensions to the catalog and once they're approved then uh anytime someone has it the catalog will know the size of the part and then uh, it'll check against the shipping plan and if it's allowed to be shipped letter mail and uh fits all the restrictions then it'll go through so yeah just adding all these things right now and then uh, working on the vlog at the same time. Multitasking is fun. Yogurt. So just a quick update on that CRA letter that you saw on the other clip. Turns out you have to file two tax returns when you're a business in Canada. The way I did it, I was doing it through the one online tax filing program and to my knowledge, I thought it was, uh, I was filing them both, but apparently I wasn't. So. I just had to refund my tax returns again, and it is not fun, but it's done now, and uh, hopefully they don't send another warning in the mail that uh, I haven't paid my taxes yet. Arguably the best part about making vlogs is when it's been like 20 minutes since you put the files in, and oh wait, is it actually working now? Let me try. Oh wait, it's actually starting to work now. Well, slowly, but for like 15 or 20 minutes, it just was not doing anything, but it's finally starting to prepare the files, and uh, I hope I got all the clips. I, you know, there's an absolute mess this time. I had to upload it over the span of several days, and yeah, who knows? So we'll try and get it all good this time, but I definitely need to make it a priority to get a better camera so I can just pop an SD card in the computer and then upload from there. But yeah, that's, uh, well, that's uploading my computers. You can probably hear it a little bit. I'll try and put it a bit closer to the computer, but well, you probably can't hear it quite as I dropped my phone. You can't hear it as good as you can in person, but it is loud. Some uh, examples of or some whatever wording we want to use of what took so long is it's now 9.30 and I finally have the clips in the vlog in order to get the 
start processing the video and stuff, I started uploading the clips at, I want to say, 7, somewhere between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. And it's 8, and it's 9.30 now. Normally, this doesn't take anywhere near this long. This vlog is, I don't know, well, not this one, but the past one, it was just a pain to get together for some reason. I definitely need to get a new camera. It's now 10.34, and I finally finished the vlog editing. So it is now getting exported. I don't think I'm going to get it uploaded tonight. Yeah, it's basically impossible to get it uploaded tonight. I'll start the upload process, but it won't get finished in time before I go to bed. Um, I might actually be able to start the process and then unlist it from my phone later and uh, post it. So I might still be able to upload it tonight or, well, tonight as in Tuesday night, but closer to Wednesday morning, most likely. And uh, yeah, at least it's finally done. Hopefully it's not this difficult next time. And I do think I actually lost a few clips in the video, because while watching through it, there's just some gaps. I know I had a lot of problems with this one, so sorry if there's any gaps. I know I found two of them, and I was able to fill a few of the gaps, but not all of them, so sorry about that. Just calling it a day, I managed to get a few new packing dimensions uh, uploaded or requested for some of the Galador parts. And uh, let's see if I can find them. Yeah, I got... A couple new photos for some of the Galador parts. This one never even had an image, even though it's been around since, uh, let's see here, since 2002, it's never had an image in light gray. So it has one now. That's dark gray in the photo. It's probably not too visible in the camera. Um, but now it's got it in light gray. Then this one here, this was the old image. And so then I upload a new image with both versions because there's actually you can, um, one second, let's just grab one of these guys here because with these heads, you can actually move the pin on the back and it's got goggles or something. So then uh, for both types of that head, uploaded some new photos and asked if we could add a note to the description of the part so that people know about that because it, uh, I didn't even know that was there. I saw by complete accident when I was listing, I was like, wait, are the uh, pin things, these parts here different on the designs but yeah that's how i found out so yeah i got those uploaded and then uh one more image over here the old image wasn't too too bad but it was quite small so this one will be a lot easier on the eyes and uh just got some millennium falcon parts these things have been waiting for a long time does this show when they were added no i don't think so but it's been uh almost half a year i want to say since i uh added them to the catalog I can't quite remember exactly how long though, but yeah, we'll see uh, how long it'll take to get uh, this stuff approved. I think they approved like two parts from the set or one part, but yeah, who knows. So I don't think I'll be getting the vlog uplo uploaded tonight because after about an hour, it says it's only 44% done and with an hour left to go and it's already past 11 and my rice is probably burnt upstairs by now because I'm late, but yeah, this is going to have to uh, be finished tomorrow then. Sorry for the delay in the previous vlog. I forgot to record earlier, but I just finished my rice and now I have my yogurt. So I just got the other figures in the mail, the rare ones. There's just turned out there's a lack of communication, you know, misunderstanding, but I've got them now, and so then this one here looks a little bit uh, dirty, so I'm gonna probably get a cloth and wipe them down and stuff. His legs are really oh no, that did not work. Um, so I'm just gonna have to see. I probably assembled him wrong or something like that, and uh, figure that stuff out later. But I'm pretty sure that this is a computer of some sort. Yep, you can see there. There's a whole bunch of different options. I think the thing said you can play like nine different modes or levels or something like that. I don't know oh much. I only saw the box for a second. But yeah, it's overall pretty cool. So this one, one sold for 220 something bucks. This one here is about 70, I wanna say. And this one sold for 50 bucks. But I'm most likely gonna just park them out because currently I mostly just sell parts and specialize in parts instead of sets. So that'll be nice to part out. It's always fight, fun fighting upstairs because I work in a dark basement, so I like all the curtains closed. So every time I uh, come upstairs, I close the curtains. But then as soon as I'm gone, uh, my parents open the curtains. And then it's always funny, always having to open and close them like 10 times a day. 
So I'm back working on the Galador stuff. Got the first part up. Got some nice dimensions for it, added to the catalog. And all the previous ones from yesterday have been improved. Personally, I, it's, I find it relaxing and fun to just add uh, dimensions and new photos. I don't think I'm going to add a new photo for this one. It, uh, it's... I'm, I'm not sure. It's a bit blurry. And uh, the one in the other color looks a lot better. So... I might upload one, because it is a little bit off. Yeah, I think I'm going to quickly upload a photo. I typically take photos. Uh, I grab a shipping label from the thing, uh, and then I just place it on whichever way works best. And then I just grab my light and put it super close to the part. And then I can usually take a photo. If I need more room, I'll just grab another shipping label. And then I usually edit out any thing that you can do that you can see that's not supposed to be there like the borders and stuff so i can like for example i'd be able to take a photo like this and then just edit out the sides the shadowing is bad so i won't be able to get it here but i am not able to use photoshop to just properly edit it i tried that on my computer turn into an airplane i don't think i got any of those clips saved in a different vlog but i tried getting uh photoshop and it was not fun to say the least yeah, my computer hasn't run that slow in a very long time. So yeah, this is the best I can do. I know some people can do amazing editing for their photos, but I'm not at that point right now, unfortunately. So I decided to upload a new image for the part, and this is the old image, and this is the new image. I'm pretty happy with how it came out, so I'm going to now submit this image, and hopefully it'll be approved. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just it's so much nicer to look at uh, as opposed to an older image, which for its time was probably one of the best cameras. Let's see, will it tell us when? Well, it was added in 2007, so the photo was probably added around that same time, so cameras weren't nearly as good back then. And in a couple of years, this will probably be a bad photo in comparison, but I personally like it a little bit, so it's nice. So yeah, one way to know you've got the perfect measurement, it's not, it doesn't look straight in the photo, but I've, uh, in the video, but I've taken the measurement a couple of times with it perfectly straight, and, uh, once it holds like that, you know you get a good measurement, uh, and it's uh, 4.48. So then I just go to the length, type in 4.48. I always keep up one of these images here because for some reason I can never remember which side is which, even though I've seen it a million times before. But when you always look at odd-shaped parts, you always just have to like position it, and it's sometimes difficult to remember. But then I do that, and then I can just add the dimensions nice and easily, and it's pretty fun. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it is raining a lot outside. That's my door. It's taped shut with the curtain in front of it so that bugs don't get in. And so I had a backdrop for eBay photos when I worked here, but I'll let it put the camera close you from here. Yeah, it's just really nice when you have rain in the background. It's just so relaxing to hear when you're working. It makes working a lot more fun. So, yeah, it's just nice when that happens. It's not too often. It It's uh, for like the past couple weeks or month or so we've been told by the weather network that it's going to be raining every day basically but we've never had any rain so yeah it's nice that it's finally here but yeah it's raining nicely it is quite nice it's still humid actually quite a bit but raining in the nice backyard the uh, storm a couple of days ago or weeks ago, or probably months ago at this point, took away our uh, roof of our gazebo. Just put it up the day before and then it rained and then it was gone. But it's nice outside. So I was, I add these pills uh, to my stuff. But the thing is, one of the ingredients in here um, is actually uh, outlawed in Europe because it's been uh, supposed titanium dioxide. That's actually been outlawed in Europe and a Apparently, there's a court case in the States regarding it. So, I'm not sure if I could should continue using these guys. Um, yeah, I might have to find a different brand because, yeah, when you're about lost something, it's usually bad for food-related stuff. But, who knows? There's a truck sitting outside. It's been there for a while. We are pretty sure it's Amazon delivery. And ever since it started raining, he's just sitting there. I think he's waiting for the uh, rain to stop before he delivers his parcel. Yogurt. Just got back from my yogurt break, time to get back to work. But I think, I don't know what happens. Every now and then when I eat yogurt, my hands, you can kind of see it, they just completely dry out. I don't know what it is, but every now and then they just completely dry out and it just really feels weird. So, but I'm gonna 
get back to work and uh, these are the next ones up on the chopping block to get dimensions added and then listed. Whenever I upload photos, I first take the photos like I think I mentioned previously with uh, the label uh, and uh, the light here. And then after that, I send them from my phone to my own email address so I can get them on the computer the fastest. This is the way I've found is the fastest to just get them to my computer. Then I download them. If I'm doing a merged uh, photo, I download them one at a time from uh, the one that I want on top first and then the one I want on bottom second. Then I bring them to a photo resizer where I can uh, resize it, crop it, and rotate it as needed. And then once that's done, I just go to this page. It's, I don't know if there's other ones, there probably is. And then I click go back. And then I add the two files and I say if I want them to be on top or below, uh, on top and below or left and right of each other. And then if I need to do any other details, I can add that. Then I can just press ok then it'll merge the files and then after i do that i bring the file back into the photo resizer resize it to fit the dimensions uh that are allowed for uh, photos on bricklink which is up to 600 wide and up to 800 tall at the highest and then once that's done then i save the file then i upload the file to here make sure i have the right part number and color selected and then after it's uploaded, I can then upload the image to Bricklink. It's a pretty fun process, and uh, I mean, it's not for everyone, but I find it to be pretty fun. I think I got the uh, wide and height thing uh, mixed up when I was saying it earlier. It's up to 800 by 600, which is 800 wide, and then 600 tall. So I just go here, enter 600, click apply, then I download the file, then I go choose file, select the one I just edited on, and now I've got this photo here. It's pretty nice, I think, to get it like this. And the old image was this thing right here. So old and new. I think I it's a little bit of an improvement. And then I just click upload image. And then it's done. And then I can go to here, click on market, click on pending approval, then click on catalog add or change, and then it'll show the ones that I've got waiting here. Then I can just go to item images, and then I can see the ones I edited on. It's pretty fun to just see how long it takes for these things to be approved. Images usually are one of the faster ones to be approved. New parts that aren't printed or needed for new sets inventories usually take a while, but the, um, other parts are images usually take a couple days, maybe a week or so to get approved because they just need to be visually confirmed. But stickered parts, the uh, catalog associates on the other end have to go individually part by part, check the instruction manual, make sure all the stickers are applied properly, and then approve it and, oh, and then approve it and stuff like that. And I've heard it's a very outdated system and they're extremely understaffed and stuff like that. So it takes a very long time to get most of these things approved, but in uh, the end of the day, or well, end of the year usually, most of them do end up getting approved. So it takes a while, but it uh, gets done eventually. And it's uh, very much appreciated by the community what they do. Finally got vlog number six uploaded, which is the one before this. And so that's done. And so I'm almost done the blue Galador parts. I've gotten all of this stuff listed, new parts photographed, except for the first few where I didn't remember. And dimensions added for, I think, all of them because none of them had dimensions. So I'm just going to finish this little bit of blue uh, Galador stuff here. And I got a little bit more blue Galador there. Then I'm going to have to tackle the next Galador box. Not sure quite which one I'm going to do next, but uh, I'm going to get one of them done. Just finished adding the packing dimensions for this part and then a new photo. This is the old photo. It's the camera's not being blurry. It's it's quite blurry in the photo. So that's the old one and that's the new one. So yeah, it, it's just little improvements like this. Some people find it enjoyable to do. And so uh, I know that there's a couple of us who had a decent amount of photos. I don't add nearly as many as a lot of other people, but it's uh, always good to just add photos when you can. I believe they say, as long as it's better than the previous photo, they'll accept it almost every single time, if not every time. So it's just a good practice. Oh, and our 
smoke alarms going off i think i don't know if you'll be able to hear it in the video probably just something cooked a bit too long in the oven can't say i've ever seen lentils called football before i mean they don't really look that much like a football uh you learn something new every day i guess and i know it's probably just me but i cycle through gaming chairs so often this is my third or fourth gaming chair in the past year or two it's just you can kind of see it's super wobbly, and uh, the wheels, I'm pushing it in a straight line, but it's going on an angle, you can't see it properly in the video, but see, it's just, the wheels are already messed up. I don't know what it is with me in gaming chairs, but they just do not work well. I need a chair with rolling wheels, because I always roll around the work area and stuff, but, and basically, you might as well get a gaming chair at that point, so that you get some lumbar support and a headrest over here and stuff but yeah it just these things do not last long for me i don't know what it is this does not happen very often but i think i found a mistake in the brickland catalog i was working on this piece right here and uh as you can see it's got sand blue legs and what appears to be a light blue torso so then i left the title and it says it has medium blue legs. Well, medium blue looks nothing like this. And then to confirm I'm not going crazy, I checked out the set image for it here. And the, uh, one second right here, let me get this one up. The bottom of the shirt, this part right here is the same color as the legs. And then sure enough, if you go to the set, go to the inventory, what color are the legs? The legs are sand blue. So I'm going to request a catalog change to change it from medium blue to sand blue. So that should uh, hopefully make the catalog just a little bit better again. I ended up using a bit of tape on the previous shipping label for um, to get the part to stand straight so I could take the photos. So I'm gonna need another shipping label now to take the next photos. This one, it's uh, now I want the older blurrier parts, so. Let's see what I can do. This here is the best condition one I have of the three. The other ones all have some wear, like on the shoes, there's bite marks and stuff. This one here doesn't have bite marks on the shoes. It has a few black marks on it, but uh, that should be good. I should be able to take photos of it. Still, I've uploaded, uploaded new packing dimensions. They were completely different than the previous ones by a decent amount, so not quite sure what was going on with those ones. Probably was done with a standard ruler. Sorry, my video cut out there. My sto my phone storage was full again. Um, so I'm going to have to definitely get a camera sometime soon. But then uh, at the end results, that was the old photo. And this is the new photo. So overall, I like it. But the photo thing is confusing. So my iCloud storage is full, but I just upgraded it to 200 gigabytes. And I only have 50 gigabytes in my iCloud. So it probably just takes a while to work out all that stuff. But... Yeah, then uh, that's done. I'm not sure how much more I'll be able to record for this vlog. I might have to partially edit it and save it for later and then finish editing it another time after I delete all the files from my phone so I'll have a bit more room maybe. Who knows? Finally got my copy of the uh, Great Fishing Boat in the mail. I think I ordered this thing like two years ago or no, not two years ago, a year ago or somewhere around there when uh, the pre-release for the first wave of the designer program sets was out and um it finally shipped so now i'm going to bring it and i have one second let me grab this light i do have the sorry my video cut out there my storage was full again but i do actually have a small personal collection of lego and so then i'll be having the first or the second wave of the designer program sets uh complete there now and so then i've got a couple i don't know why i kept the price of the barracuda box i bought that to part out but um yeah i guess i kept the box but then this one will be added to my collection the only problem is where am i gonna put it hmm that is the problem i still have a bit of room i could probably move the cup cars around but yeah it'll it looks nice for sure just sold two things from the eBay room again. Let's see if we can find them real quick. We sold one of these, paid three bucks, sold it for 20. And then, is it on this shelf? Hmm. 
Where is it? It's not on the other shelf. It's somewhere here. I'm looking for a CD case. It's hiding somewhere. I'll check back in once I find it. So I finally found the other item and I had put all of my eBay inventory over here, but for some reason it was hidden underneath this box right here. So it took us at least a good 15 to 20 minutes. We checked up here, then went downstairs to look and then came back up here. And then finally we found it underneath this box right here. So at least it's been found now and it'll be able to be shipped out. Yogurt and rice. Just sold one more thing from the eBay room. Let's see if we can find it. It was right um, here. So this one here, can't remember if I paid 10 or 20 bucks for it, but let's see if we can get the camera to focus a bit there. Uh, but I just sold it for $44.99 plus shipping and tax. So there's a nice sale. But yeah, some of this Galador stuff, like a, a lot of these oddly shaped parts and stuff even though they're often worth only like one second let me get the camera to focus it's okay yeah that's a bit focused better now even though a lot of these parts are only worth two or three dollars since we are in canada and shipping costs a lot more based off of size like for example in canada this part here i could ship it for two to two and a half bucks why was that focusing that's good okay for two to two and a half bucks i could ship this to the same place depending where it's going to ship this part it would cost me anywhere between 10 to 20 bucks to ship it so that's why uh i have a flat rate shipping in my store so no one even in canada pays more than seven and a half bucks on shipping but that's why when a part like this that's only worth like two bucks i have to put it my sale uh in my store for sale for like seven eight bucks otherwise i just guaranteed lose money on it meanwhile if it's priced a bit higher but since it's flat rate shipping it works out so in the end the buyer still often gets a good deal and uh, I'm not completely going bankrupt on shipping most of the time. So yeah, it's quite difficult shipping in Canada because we have a two centimeter limit for uh, uh, shipping stuff for it to go uh, cheaper as opposed to parcel because letter mail items can go as long as they're approximately two centimeters or smaller. Anything larger than that, this cannot be shipped letter mail and then you have to ship at parcel rate which can just get crazy expensive. Uh, I think I once spent over 30 bucks shipping a parcel. It was all the way to up north in the Northwestern Territories, I think. Uh, but it's not that common to ship stuff out there. But even in Ontario, the cheapest is like 10 bucks for a parcel. And uh, even in, to other places in Ontario where I live, uh, which is the province I live, it can still sometimes cost 15 to 20 bucks to ship a small parcel. So yeah, it's you have to, when you have a flat rate shipping option and you have odd shaped items like this, you can't price them uh anything near what they typically sell for because it's just not a feasible option so yeah it's not like they're going to sell fast or anything like that and it discourages a lot of buyers but in reality for a decent amount of them it's actually the cheapest option to get it for me because i still lose money on some orders every now and then like for example these things i price them they're only worth like 20 or 30 cents each but because of their size i price them more closer to three dollars a piece and uh it's going to cost me a lot to ship so unless the buyer uh places a decent order they're going to be getting a good deal even though they pay more for the item but there's a decent chance i'll lose money on shipping on the item and so yeah it works out in the end and uh i don't lose money too often i say like maybe one or two percent of orders i lose money on shipping because of oversized items but it's not that common at all thankfully yogurt and drugs and yogurt so I got the last of the Technic off of the floor and into that bucket. So now we're just going to grab that bucket and then dump it in this bucket. And then that will be all of the Technic all ready for sorting. The sorting's coming along smoothly. Uh, a lot of gears. These things are usually pretty good. And just a lot of random stuff in general. I have no idea what this container is. Probably just needs to be uh, sorted more in depth or something. Um, but yeah, it's overall going decently well. I already got one container full of <clears throat> the uh, bricks with holes, so pretty nice. Gotta just love it when you go to your computer and then it's just completely frozen and so then you exit all the tabs to unfreeze it, but then the last tab just will not exit, will not do anything. The thing is, it's not even like it's a slow computer or whatever. I, it's a pretty solid specs for a computer, and it's just a internet workstation. I mean, I do some editing, but I haven't been editing on this computer in 48 hours, and it's working perfectly fine until now. The background is working fine. I just can't... 
exit this. And for some reason, Google opened earlier, even though I never clicked it, and I just can't exit it. I'm gonna try and look up that shortcut to force exit everything now. And immediately afterwards, it exited. Well, I think I clicked on the new window tab too many times. I ended up restarting my computer after everything finally was working again. And so now I opened a few too many tabs, but, oh, is this one the one that's not working? Okay, it is, okay, at least, that's good. But uh, the background is still trying to load into and stuff like that, but hopefully I can get a little bit of work done now. I don't know what the time was before, if I even showed it, but it's almost three o'clock now. It's been at least five, 10 minutes since I uh, the computer was restarted. It just takes so long some days. And the slow computer saga continues. Oh, there, must be good luck when I record. It just seems to always go back to normal as soon as I press record, but that's done. Apparently I have a Java update and stuff like that, but let's see how long till I can get everything up I need to start packing. It is currently 2.55. Let's see what time it'll be. It's now 3.03 and I finally have everything ready to go. Everything's all opened up on the top and it's finally all done there. I wrote a message and stuff like that, so that took up like a minute or so, but it's finally back to normal. Quite warm outside today. I just got back from the post office. I'm gonna play the Xbox for a little bit, then I am going to get back to work on Galador parts. All of the new dimensions and the new name change for the one part, I think I had that in a previous clip, uh, but if you didn't, I just changed the name on this because that was the wrong num uh, name in the catalog. All of that stuff was approved from yesterday. Images aren't approved yet, but they won't be for a while because those always take a while. Uh, so then I'm going to add dimensions and list, hopefully, and possibly add new photos for the ones that are needed. At least the rest of these gray parts by supper time, which is around 6 for me. It's 4 o'clock right now. Eh, that might be saying a bit too much. I probably won't get this all done by supper, but hopefully by the end of the day, uh, I'll have all of these gray parts listed and I'll be able to start tackling uh, either the black or the dark green next. There is a lot of dark green, and I think this is mostly from just one different set, so I think the guy must have had at least 15, 20 copies of the one set. It was crazy, but it's fun to just get it listed, and uh, got a little bit listed so far, not that much yet, but it's getting there, slowly but shortly. On today's episode of Random Common Things That Sold for a Bunch of Money, I just sold two medium nougat hands, four after tax and shipping, I don't want to show their postal code. Eleven dollars and seventy-eight cents. I, I, I. At this point, I don't even know why. Like, I mean, it's going to the states, and then in the states, you can get minifigures that have these hands for like dirt cheap, like the complete minifigure, and get the hands on the side. But for some reason, they ordered for me up in Canada and paid eleven seventy-eight for just two medium nougat hands. Who knows what's going to be next? I was going to list some of the Galador stuff, but then I decided I'm going to list a few of these one-by-one one clips, and we have a winner. These are one-by-one one tan with the, I believe it's called a U-clip. Let me just check. Uh, no, it's just a normal clip. There's the other version that has the, uh, oh, no, that's not it. There's two versions. This is, well, three versions. This is the O-clip, and this is the standard uh, older version, and there's also a version where there's a slit at the bottom of it, but these ones here are the tan normal version, and these ones go for about two bucks a piece. It, it, oh, the lighting is just really bad, sorry. Uh, but yeah, it's a nice uh, find for sure. And I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 15, 13 of them. So yeah, at least 26 bucks right here, unless I did my math bad. Who knows, but yeah, that was a nice find. And earlier we had some orange clips that were also good winners and then that were worth like a dollar or something each. And then we now have the dark green one by one clips and they are worth a good amount as well. So yeah, these one by one clips are always lots of fun to get listed and are oftentimes worth a good amount. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. So yeah, the clips are pretty similar to that of normal parts. About 50% of them are listed without comments because they're in good condition. Uh, and the other 50% is divided between uh, ones that I'm going to list that have minor damage and ones that I can't list because they're too badly damaged. Like, I mean, usually a clip isn't too usable if it's only got one bar. So uh, stuff like that. And it's just, a lot of these have like stress marks in the 
center area probably can't see it i don't even know if this is one that has it no it isn't but some of them just have stress marks in between the clip and stuff like that so yeah thankfully i haven't found too many that are garbage yet uh but yeah overall it's mostly just the good and the minor damage so yeah it's going pretty well so i found yet another thing to add oh that was my workout scanner because I haven't scanned anything in 30 minutes but I finally found another thing I, I now work on when I edit photos normally I would take a photo of the part then I would upload then I would email myself email myself the image then I would open a photo resizer then I would resize the photo then I would crop the photo then I would if I needed to have multiple images I would put it into the uh in image combiner then i would go back with the uh multiple images into one then i would resize it again and then i would upload the images and that's what i would stand do it normally but i found another thing now i have this uh thing uh that erases backgrounds from photos so i don't even need a background it, it did pretty well i dare say um of removing the background so now i don't need a white background for the parts which is going to save me a lot of shipping labels down the road but now it adds an extra step where i take a photo then i email myself the photo then i put the photo into the photo editor then after that i crop the photo then i resize the photo then i put it into the uh photo editor then i confirm that it's the right size because sometimes it changes the size even though it says original size but i might have just missed it that time then after that i put it into the uh image combiner then after i put it into the image combiner i sometimes have up to four images that i put into one i don't know if they'll approve those or if they're gonna ask me to stop that or not but two images is semi-normal and then after i put it into the image combiner then i put it back into the photo resizer then i resize it and then i upload it so it's a bit more work, but it I dare say that this photo looks really professional now. It's a bit blurry, but I am very happy with how this photo looks now. Previously, when I see photos like this, people would always say they're using Photoshop and stuff like that. I tried installing that on my computer, turned it into an airplane, and uh, did not like that. It was super loud and just everything froze. And uh, now I can just do it for free online using this random website. Well, at least until it tells me I need to pay for something and then I'll just exit out, delete cookies, try again or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with how this new image came out. What do you guys think of it? Yogurt and rice and yogurt. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try to upload the video. Like, I'm the days I try to aim for uploading vlogs are on Wednesdays and Saturdays. But I think since I always have difficulty getting it uploaded by uh, before the end of the day on those days, I think I'm going to try to work on uploading the vlogs in the morning. So right now it's currently 1.31 p.m. Well, it's morning for me. I get up like 11 or 12 or so. But I'm going to try and upload it before I do the day's work and then start the next vlog at the second half of the day so that that way the vlogs get uploaded when it's not literally midnight and um it, i think it might work out better that way so i'm gonna first before i get to work uh i'm gonna try to start downloading the videos and then putting them into the editor and i'll try and get it uploaded so we'll see how long it takes it's currently 1 30 ish so hmm probably take at least an hour i want to say but i don't know but yeah this will probably be the end of the vlog then thank you for watching and i'm going to try to upload it more so in the morning or mid-afternoon we'll start editing it then for future vlogs so wednesdays and saturdays is the new hopeful schedule